One last time Sit down and have, have a drink with me One last time And if we get this right We're gonna teach him how to say goodbye, say goodbye. You and I Tonight we are going to see Logan, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you liked that performance, because we may never do that again. Yes, to, but it's the last Hugh Jackman Wolverine movie pretty much ever. He's, or so he says right now, how, how hey, let's, fa let's face it, the guy's not getting any younger, and plus he's contributed, and plus his little bout with skin cancer has been another thing that he's contributed to this. But Wolverine has had, but in 17 years that he has taken on this role, Hugh Jackman has never once shirked his responsibilities as Wolverine. He has spent the last 17 years pretty much abusing his body in order to get into fighting shape constantly as long as there is an X-Men movie he needs to be in. And it, the thing about this is that 17 years, so if you were born around the time the first X-Men movie came out, you are now old enough to see this movie because it is rated R. Yes, this movie, the original X Men movie, is officially old. Is officially old enough. To, if the original X Men movie was a person, it would be a few months before I could finally see this in theory. So it would have to go to a discount theater. But, theater, but it is 17 years old. Yes, and we have been waiting for an already Wolverine movie for so long because when. Because when the first X-Men Origins movie came out, we were, um, it was back in 2009, eight years ago. So Spencer and I would have been 16. 16. So, meaning we would not have been allowed to go see Wolverine, in, meaning we would not have been go allowed to go into the movie theater. The first time, the first already movie we saw in the theater was Cop Out, by the way. Yeah. Pray but, for us. <laughs> but, oh, by, the, by the way, so, hey, I'm kind of rounding up because we turned 24 on Sunday. Yay! Anyway, <laughs> but anyway, our, but anyway, the, this movie has been 17 years in the making. This is low. This is Wolverine. This is, and not only is this Hugh Jackman's last Wolverine movie. So he's said multiple times, times we, times. Hopefully, I really hope it's going to be a long while before we actually see another Wolverine on the silver screen. Yeah. But. <laughs> We can thank, and we can thank Deadpool for the fact that this is rated R. Because if it wasn't for Deadpool, then Fox wouldn't have realized, oh, R-rated superhero movies might actually make some money. Yeah, we also have the, but we also have so much extra cool stuff coming into this movie. It's the, an adaptation of probably one of the most iconic Wolverine stories, Old Man Logan. Because it's a basic, even though it's not exactly Old Man Logan, it takes the basic premise and set up, it's basically like Civil War or was to Captain America 3. This is essentially the set, this is, a, it takes the basic premise of Wolver of an older Wolverine in a post-apocalyptic world who has basically retired, and it, and from there the story has changed. Honestly, when we first, when we saw the first real trailer to this, we just assumed that Hugh Jackman was tired of people saying, you should do a Last of Us movie, you should do a Last of Us movie, and he just said, fine, we'll do the Last of Us movie. To which someone obviously said, and Sony owns the rights, to which he said, fine, then we'll just make it a Wolverine movie. Because this movie looks almost exactly like The Last of Us. Yeah, we have so much cool stuff, but this movie looks incredible. The fact that Johnny Cash is hurt, played over the first trailer, had me already set to go see this. In, fa in fact, it's kind of funny, because James, one of James Mangold's first big directing jobs was Walk the Line, the Johnny Cash biopic, which is, and it's funny that he's actually writing and directing this movie now. Yeah, and then we also, but also a fact of this movie is Patrick Stewart, this is his last time as Xavier, as Charles Xavier. This is gonna be, this is gonna be a big, ending for everything and the, this could very well be a soft this could very well lead into a soft reboot of the franchise x-men franchise as a whole but we still get but as far as we know we've still got mcavoy and boy and fassbender and i don't think mckellen and stewart are really going any are really going to be going much of anywhere but anywhere so we got that going for us and honestly the x and honestly the x-men franchise has been going through quite the nice retooling it hasn't been a going lately. It hasn't been... The movies have been in really good... have been really good. I mean, they're not nearly as memorable as the stuff in the main Marvel Universe canon, but Deadpool, Days of Future Past, and to a slightly lesser extent, Apocalypse, have been really good. 
Yeah, we liked Apocalypse, we liked Days of Future Past, we liked, we even liked The Last Stand, and to some extent, we did enjoy X-Men Origins. There is a few, there's a, obviously we're not going to be, we're not going to totally gush over it. We're not going to go defending it or anything. But I mean, when we first saw, this, when we first saw Wolverine, we, the X-Men Origins Wolverine, that was basically before we started to develop our, ta develop taste in good movies, so we, uh, in movies, that was, ba that was back around the time we liked The Last Airbender. Don't judge us! But we, but we love, but we, there's stuff to like about every, Every X Men movie, there is stuff to like about it, whether it's good or bad. Whether it's good or bad, and obviously X Men Origins had, although obviously X Men Origins committed the cardinal sin of sewing Deadpool's fucking mouth shut. Luckily, they did not do that in the Wolverine because Deadpool did not feature in the Wolverine. But the, we, the Wolverine did not take an iconic character and take away all the stuff that made him cool. Yeah, except we, for maybe the Silver Samurai, but we don't know anyone who likes the Sil. We don't know anyone who knows the Silver Samurai, so yeah. But we have ta been talking for an extra long amount of time, but that's basically because this is pretty much a big movie this year. Yeah, this is the last, once again, last Hugh Jackman movie. It's gonna uh, be Wolverine. We have last Hugh Jackman movie as Wolverine. We've got no clue where the X Men universe is going next because no one's really announced anything. We have TV. Sh we have what's on TV right now, Legion, and a bunch of other shows that are in development as well, but. But for right now, the X-Men universe is kind of at a standstill, and we'll see exactly where that standstill brings us when we finally get to see this movie in a couple minutes, in a little bit. Yeah, so we, I guess we're just going to have to stop talking now and see you guys after the jump. Bye. So, let's talk about this. That was fucking intense. Yeah, this is a heavy movie. It, by the end of it, you... First of all, this R rating is like amazingly pushing it. Like by the end of it, you are feeling every single blow, and of the entire thing. And this movie, it's really great. Also, when the credits start rolling, you really get the feeling that oh fuck, damn it, I keep dropping this. But by the time the credits start rolling, you get the feeling that James Mangold really, really loves Johnny Cash. Because well, I guess he would because well he should because he made an entire movie about him but but yeah but either way let's talk about the movie this was incredible the acting is incredible I act incredible it was in, it was really great to see Patrick Stewart playing essentially Charles Xavier at his weakest mo absolute weakest moment when we meet. Up with Charles and Logan. Logan has been. They're go, the other mutants are gone. Charles has had to resort to. And Charles is having this epidemic. Something has happened to Charles to the point that he has to medicate himself so his powers don't fluctuate the way they have been. And Logan is basically essentially his caretaker. And we get this relationship because they've been together for this long. And it's just a beautiful relationship that we have seen over all these movies to come to this moment. And the, Stephen Merchant is in this movie as a, a mutant named Caliban. I don't know how accurate to the comics he is because we don't... Well, he was already in, well, in X-Men Apocalypse. Oh. Well, well, you saw, well, we saw him in X-Men Apocalypse. He was played by a completely different actor. <laughs> well, that answers my question, but... I think he did a pretty good job for as little in the movie as he is. I'm not going to spoil why he's in so little of the movie. We have... De now we got Hugh Jackman we haven't talked about. He is fantastic. Award work. There's getting an award buzz out of this, and I'm like, yes. Yeah, this is... Like I said before, the... Hugh Jackman has never... It, whenever there's been a bad Wolverine movie... Hugh Jackman's not the problem, because Hugh Jackman gives his all to this. He has pretty much given his best years to this role, and it's really hard to say goodbye to him now that everything has, with especially when he goes out on such a high note like this. And it's just hard to watch. It's hard to say goodbye. You just don't want to say goodbye to this great incarnation of this character. And when, eventually, when the Fox decides to just pull the plug on the franchise altogether and reboot it, they are going to recast him. But 
it's not gonna but it's done but here it's done in such a way that we don't need that we're not gonna be getting an incarnation of Logan for a long of Wolverine for a long time. And we have and and the score is incredible. I mean I in during this like first big action scene of the movie, we get the we get this score that's got this big orchestral drum, primal drum beat over the top with this, like, really, like, with this piano piece over the p part, top of it, and I just love unsettling scores like that because it really highlights the, uh, just how deep these characters are in, in trouble. And now we can talk about the rising star, no doubt the rising star of the movie, Daphne Keene. As Laura, aka X-23. But then again, I, it's. But then again, that's not a spoiler because you know it's because you know everyone has been saying it's X twenty three, it's X twenty three. But yeah, she is fantastic in this movie. She is probably one of the best child actors to, to come out of anything lately. The thing about the fun thing about the incredible thing about her is that she is able to command that she's able to basically tell you everything she's feeling, but without saying a word for most of the movie. She does not talk for most of the movie, and we get, and there is a scene between, and then the first time she talks, it's like a scene between her and Hugh Jackman, and she's holding her own, and she's only speaking Spanish, but you still get what, but if you could, don't speak a single word of Spanish, you still get what she's saying. And the whole, and, and the villains in the, the villains in this movie, I, who we, they're really good. They're really good. I just wish I knew, rem I could remember remember anything about them because they're just kind. Of, because they're there. I mean, they're. I mean, it's this isn't like a like Wolverine and uh, like Wolverine and Charles going on a like cross country road trip and then every, and then just stuff gets in the way. The villains actually do contribute to the actual slowing them down. But this is, but, but. The, I, but it feels like, but they kind of feel like an afterthought when you get through all the drama that this movie kind of builds on. It's very much a, it's very much a dramatic piece. There's, an, it's not an X Men movie. It doesn't feel like an X Men movie. We had like an, we had an X Men movie with Apocalypse, and it, it and that happened. But now we got it, this. This needed to happen because this needed to be the way Logan went out on a high note. That Wolverine could end. As Hugh ja uh, this is Hugh Jackman's last time playing Wolverine, and he, he really gave it his all. And James Mangold, the action sequences are, like we've been saying, intense. They're really, really awesome because you see blood, you feel everything. Like you can feel the, the it, Wolverine's claws going into people. And it's kind of incredible. After 17 years and nine movies of seeing Wolverine in stabbing people and his claws coming out completely clean, and now we can finally, and now he finally stab, and now he stabs people, and there's blood on his claws because now this is because they're allowed to show this. I'm not saying that blood makes a movie good automatically. I'm just saying that this adds realness to the movie and I, it's kind of weird saying that to a movie where there's characters who, with robot arms and characters who can breathe I, pure ice and all uh, and peel in the blink of an eye but this is but it but I feel like this is one of those stories that needed that realism to work to grow these characters this was probably it's a great movie it's a great high note to go we keep it Pounding on this, but it is a great high note to go out for Jackman to go out with to, to take Wolverine and go out on, and it's just definitely worth seeing. If you had, don't, go, if you weren't planning on seeing this, do it, please. You will only be doing yourself a disservice by not seeing it. Also, don't bring the also don't bring kids to this. Uh, Deadpool was one thing, but uh, this is a completely different experience. Deadpool, I mean, yeah, Deadpool, you, uh, we can give a pass. As we were, we saw Kaijak when we were five years old. We, when we were like five years old, we didn't know we've gotten that kind of stuff before. But this is a completely different thing. Do not take the kids. Absolutely, do not. And also, we usually say stay through the credits but if there is something to see. But, but in this case, stay. Come early. 
get there as early as you possibly can and sit through the trailers if you got to, but there is something at the beginning that you need to see because it is worth it. Worth it. And we don't know if you should stay through the credits. All I know is we didn't stay because simply because I heard James Man I heard apparently James Mangold said there is no post credit scene, so I'm just gonna take his word for it. But other than that, I think we pretty much got everything out of the way. Logan is awesome. Go see it. And I think that's it for right now. Yeah. So anyway guys, thanks for watching. We will see you guys next time when we review when we go to see Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. Alright then. Nice. See you bye. Bye.